Chef Ben, and this is Dinner with Ben, episode 15. Today we're making cauliflower wings and kimchi fried rice with spicy, quick pickled cucumbers. Uh, there is... <laughs> hello everybody, hello Sue, hello Kat, thanks for coming. Um, there is a special guest coming this evening, but he's running a little bit late. He'll be here soon, and at some point this evening we'll be doing a fantastic giveaway. I'm not going to give away too many, too much information about it, I guess. Um, so, as usual, we're going to wait a few minutes for more people to show up, including our special guest. Uh, and in the meantime, hello Donna. In the meantime, I'm going to turn the oven on to 450. Because we are going to bake our cauliflower wings. Hello, Sue's from the other room. Nice to see you. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, so while we're waiting for a few more people to show up and for our oven to heat up, let's talk about kimchi. So this is homemade kimchi that I should have started last week, but I'm going to be honest, I kind of shit the bed on it and just made it today. Hello Ruby, thanks for joining us. So, kimchi is actually fermented. It's kind of like a Korean uh, sauerkraut. So this isn't actually fermented. It looks like kimchi, but it doesn't taste like kimchi. Um, so I'm kind of cheating today, but I can't eat commercial kimchi because most of them have shellfish in them. They have baby dried shrimp in them, and I can't eat it. So I have to make my own, and I meant to make this last week, and I kind of forgot until today. But it'll still be good. I added a little bit of vinegar to it to kind of give it that acidic flavor. Uh, kimchi is made simply by salting cabbage, pulling moisture out of it, and then adding uh, Korean chili powder, uh, often green onions, often daikon radish, um, and you know ginger garlic, a few other things. Traditionally, it would be buried in clay pots and left to ferment um, below the frost line, so it would still be good in the winter, it would still be good in the summer, just kind of be good all year round. Uh, kimchi dates back very, very far to before Christ, um, but it was much different than it is now. It didn't have the chili paste in it because they didn't have chilies in Korea at that point. That's like, uh, hello Michelle! That's pretty much all my kimchi knowledge that I just dropped on you. It is apparently terrific for you because it's fermented. It has a lot of good bacteria in it, and the chilies are good for you, too. Anyway, let's get cooking, guys. So, I have the oven on to 450. Uh, we're going to bake our wings. But before we do that, we need to make a batter for our wings. Our wings are cauliflower. So we need to make a cauliflower batter if you will. That was really bad. I'm sorry I made that joke. Okay. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take one cup of almond milk. You can use regular milk, but our special guest who will be joining us shortly is allergic to dairy. So we're going to use one cup of almond milk. I should also say um, almost every other Katie, I hope you're laughing at that joke, because I thought it was funny. Um, every, I think every other recipe I've done on this show, I, I think, I'm pretty sure every other recipe I've done on this show has been my own recipes. The ones that we're making tonight, um, I got them online, and I kind of like messed with them a little, make them you know, a little different, make them a little my own. But this, is, this was kind of a request. The cauliflower wings were a request from our special guest. Hello, Patrick, um, who will be here momentarily. Uh, so I designed a menu around it, but just kind of put different things up the internet. So I've never made any of the stuff we're going to make tonight. So hopefully it'll work out, guys. I'm hoping it'll I'm thinking it'll work out. We'll be okay. We'll be okay. I'm sure. I'm sure of it. Okay. <laughs> so we have one cup of almond milk in here. Again, you can use regular milk for sure. Uh, I'm using gluten-free flour. I'm going to add three quarters of a cup of gluten-free flour in here. 
you don't have to use gluten free flour, and you can eat gluten, go to hell. You go to hell. I'm joking. If you can eat gluten, very good for you. Alright, three quarters of a cup. Hello, Miss Juanita. So it's one quarter, two quarter, three quarter. Okay. What else do we need for this? We need a teaspoon of onion powder. I'm just going to eyeball this. That's not what I wanted to happen. This is garlic powder. How much garlic powder do I need? One teaspoon of garlic powder. That's not doing much. Now we need one teaspoon of Onion powder. This onion powder is very yellow. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that. It is very, very yellow onion powder. Okay, what else? So we have one cup of almond milk. We have three quarters of a cup of flour. We have one teaspoon of onion powder, one teaspoon of garlic powder. We're going to put it in a big pinch of salt. Okay, we're going to put in about the same amount of pepper. Just like that. Then we're going to mix it up. We're just going to whisk it together. Again, I have never made this before. This looks very thin. I'm sure, I'm sure it's going to be fine. Hey, Barb. Thanks for joining us. So, here we go. There's our very thin batter for our wings. I'm just going to set that aside. Our wings, these are not wings. Now cauliflower. So what I'm going to do here, very simply, is I want to take this part off first, the stem, right? But if I cut right down to the center of the cauliflower, I'm going to get pieces of cauliflower everywhere, and I hate that. So what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to take the tip of my knife, I'm just going to insert it about an inch and a half or so. And then I'm just going to kind of rotate around like that. And then I'm just going to pull this out. I don't want to waste too much of this cauliflower, right? So I'm just trying to, to not A, make a mess, and B, waste a bunch of cauliflower. So let's get rid of this stuff. We don't need it. We don't want it. Let's get rid of it. Okay, that's gone. So now all we're going to do is break these guys up just into smaller pieces. And if you're having trouble breaking it, then just use the tip of your knife and just cut right through the stem, like right where it's connected. So this way you're not going to get little pieces of cauliflower anywhere. You're going to get like nice big chunks. And this works with broccoli as well. This is how I usually cut up broccoli from the bottom as opposed to the top. And then you just kind of carve away at it until you get all of your little florets away. And then you just discard this. Or save this for cauliflower soup. I'm not making cauliflower soup, so I'm going to discard it, but you could. Okay, now we want these all about the same size. And I did already wash this cauliflower, if anybody's wondering. So we want them all about the same size so they all cook in roughly the same amount of time, right? We don't want one completely overcooked cauliflower wing, and we don't want a whole bunch of raw ones either. Now, obviously the good thing about this is unlike chicken wings, the raw ones aren't going to make you sick. So, all we're going to do is drop this in our batter, which again was one cup of almond milk, three quarters of a cup of Gluten-free flour, you can use regular flour, regular milk. Hi, Chrissy. Uh, and we have some onion powder, garlic powder, salt and pepper. And that is it. That's all that's in there. Okay. Nope, compost is in there. Okay. Any questions so far? How are we doing, everybody? I'm glad to see everybody. Thanks for coming. Okay, now I don't think our oven is hot yet, that's okay. So all we're going to do 
is just mix this all up, make sure all the cauliflowers are covered. I probably should have used a bigger bowl for this, but that's okay. So we're just going to toss all this in here, just get it evenly coated. And again, this is a pretty thin batter, but that's okay. We don't want it too thick, right? We don't want a really thick, thick batter. Okay, so we're just going to spread this out. Hey, Greg, how are you doing? Craig is an old chef of mine. He used to be my chef when I worked in Quebec. Okay, so this is it. We're just going to do this. Just batter these. Batter these little guys. And then line them up. And then what we're going to do, so we have the oven heated. We're just about heated to 450. And we're going to roast these. In 20 minutes, and we're going to flip them and roast them for another 20 minutes or so. We'll see how they're doing. And then hopefully they're going to come out really nice and like kind of golden and crispy. Hello Chantel, hello Steve, hello everybody. So again, we're just going to spread all this out. We don't want them touching, but I mean they're not going to expand or anything like that, so doesn't matter if they're close together. And all these little bits we're going to throw in here, even though you know, they're going to get overcooked. But maybe some crispy bits will be nice. Oh. And again, there is a special guest coming. And there is supposed to be a giveaway tonight. But he is running late. And he is in control of the giveaway. So, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Okay, I'm going to pop these guys in the oven for 20 minutes. We'll take them out, we'll flip them, and we'll pop them in for another 20. Timer 20 minutes. Boom. Sip of water. Yes, and then we're going to make some quickles. What is a quickle? Somebody asked in my head. Uh, it's a quick pickle. So what we're going to do is we are going to slice and salt some cucumber. I'm going to need this bowl. So I'm going to wash this bowl. Oh. Oh. So. What we're going to do is slice and salt this cucumber. Okay, we're not, we don't need the whole thing. I'm not going to use this whole thing. So we'll just cut that in half. And now I'm actually going to... I don't want to cut this. Should I just cut it really thin and around? Or should I cut it on my bone? You know what? Let's do... Let's do this. So what I'm going to do is cut this in half. Cut it in half again. And then I'm going to cut it as thin as I can. Just on an angle here. And as always, I'm holding the knife between my thumb and my index finger. Fingers wrapped around. And the knife is in contact with my hand. Hey Dave. Hello. The special guest has arrived, everybody. I did wash it, Steve. I washed all this stuff right before we started. Okay, so I'm going to keep cutting. And our special guest is going to come introduce himself. He's going to put on a shirt. Hold on. Hold on. He's, he's really here, I promise. I'm not making this up. There he is. Come on in. Can I put these on? Come bring them in. Oh. Everybody, this is Dave. Dave owns T North Carbonated Iced Tea, who's one of hey. our sponsors. Hey Dave, how are you today? 
Oh, you know, it's, uh, it's a busy day, but I'm good. Uh, I, uh, I'm not going to show anyone this because it stinks, but I didn't even change my shoes. I'm still wearing my sandals. You sure are. From work. And they sure do. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Uh, Good, how are you? Yeah, yeah, just wash your hands. So everybody, this is Dave. Uh, Dave is the owner, founder, and tea maker of Tea North, Carbon and Nose Tea. And Dave, are we, are we giving away some tea tonight? Yeah. We're giving away some tea tonight. One whole six pack. All six of our flavors. And Patrick has tried them, so if he wants to, if you want to know how they are, you can ask him, because he's tried them all. Okay, so all we have here, Dave, what we're making is the cucumber pickle. Okay. Um, the cauliflower wings are already in the oven. You missed that part. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So all we did is slice the cucumber very, very thinly. Then I added about two teaspoons of kosher salt, and we just mix it up. So what the salt is going to do is draw the moisture out of the cucumbers, and it's going to make it easier to pickle. Okay, cool. Everybody say hi to you, Dave. Say hi to everybody. Hello. So, Dave, what brings you here tonight? Well, food. You yes. know, I own a small business, so of course, I don't often feed myself. That's fair. Yeah, it's not true. I, yeah, I eat. <laughs> but I don't eat like this. No, it's probably true. You know, I'm happy because we sponsor your show, and I like to come make an appearance occasionally, and tea's finally in cans, so I'm happy to be giving some of it away. And Patrick, who won the last giveaway, said that the teas are awesome. You just said that right now. Thank you, bud. Awesome. Do you know how we're doing the giveaway, by any chance? Did you come up with any ideas for that? It's your show, man. No. Oh. Literally. <laughs> okay. We'll think, we'll think, we'll, we'll do it at the end of the show. We'll think about it. Anybody have any suggestions? Of how we can do the giveaway? Right in. Yeah, sure. Okay, so we have the wings in the oven. They've been there for about five minutes. They're going to need... Uh, after this initial 15 minutes, we're going to need another 20 minutes, but we need to make a barbecue sauce. Okay. How are you with a knife, Dave? I am great with a knife. I have never cut myself before. Actually, that's not true. I bought a knife recently, very sharp, from Ikea, a uh, serrated knife, and it was so sharp, unbeknownst to me, that as I was cutting a bagel, like this... That, I, was, that was a bad move. I know. Uh, my bad move. Uh, Kate was talking to me, and... I sliced into my hand, and I didn't even feel it. So it when you sharp. said, when you said you were good with a knife, that's the only time I've cut mm -hmm. myself like that. We have people who, who want some. Uh... <laughs> Maybe that's what we'll do. Maybe we'll draw names. Who knows? So okay. So you say you're good with a knife, Dave. Quite usually, I'm quite good. Yeah, well, chop me some garlic, please, sir. Sure. <laughs> Katie just said, don't trust you with a knife. <laughs> of course she did. So Katie is Dave's girlfriend, and she is she's warning me not to let him use the knife, which she, worries me a little it's bit. It's more that I just scare her when I use knives. Sometimes I act like you. So Dave, what... What flavors do we have here? So, we have six different kinds. We have orange creamsicle black tea. Yeah. We have berry bliss herbal tea. The classic black tea, which is like a lemon black tea that we just came out with recently. Um, raspberry vanilla mint green tea. Blueberry rodeo herbal tea. And Madagascar coconut white tea. Nice. What's your favorite? Uh, out of those, blueberry rodeo. Yeah? Yeah. So I'm going to need all this garlic. I mean, you want it minced or chopped or what? I want it as fine as you can get it. Okay. But all, all of it. All right. I don't, don't know as quick as you We are under time constraints. Maybe get another knife. I mean, I can chop, but I don't chop like you, because I'm going to do one clove, and you're going to do six, and put me to pure shame. Yep, yep. that's what's going to happen. That is what's going to happen. At the end of the day, we'll still have a bunch of garlic, but his will just be better than mine. Uh, Kat's asking if she can buy your tea in Saskatchewan. Kat, you cannot at the moment buy my tea in Saskatchewan, but coming in about two weeks, our new website, hopefully in two weeks, fingers crossed, our new website will be live 
which will actually show the cans, and you will be able to ship it direct to Saskatchewan. And we there would be go. happy to ship it to you. There you go. Coming very soon. If I can just schedule in some time with a creative person, which is really me, and a photographer, which is not me, I will finally finish it. And maybe, maybe you can get it, but we'll have to talk to Canada Post. Can you get them in New Brunswick? Uh, no, same answer. Coming more soon to New Brunswick. So to let's, let's, where can you get them? Sobeys. Start with Sobeys, that's a good one. Only in Nova Scotia. Only in Nova Scotia. Uh, Pete's has them. Pete's Routique has them. Definitely Halifax, I'm not sure about Bedford, we were just meeting about that this afternoon. A lot afternoon. of coffee shops have them too. A lot of coffee shops. Check our website, there's about 40 places in total you can get it right now. Okay, what is the website? Oh, tnorth.ca. I'm pretty good at this. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of suck. <laughs> <laughs> so I gotta show you a trick with the. You can show me here. all kinds of tricks. Okay, so I can scare so Katie even more. Pile it up into a bunch. Okay. Yep. Okay. My bunch is different than your yeah, bunch. Yeah, your bunch is, is different. I mean, small, you know. My garlic sauce also. Okay. Yeah, but uh, yeah, you but wasted time. You didn't need to do that. Sure. So what we're gonna do is you keep your knife flat on the on the cutting board. Knife out. So what we're going to do, actually, let me see, we're going to pull this right to the edge here. Yeah. So, keep your knife flat on the board, uh -huh. and then start right on the edge of the garlic Smearing. and work your way in. Yeah. yeah okay. I feel like not doing this so close to you, just, you know. I'm not used to doing it with this knife. You want to switch? No. Okay. That one looks cooler. Yeah, this one is cool. This one is actually made, if anybody's curious, because I'm sure you've been seeing it back there. This knife is actually made from a recycled steel mill blade. Uh, and then this is a Mexican shipping pallet made out of cherry wood, I think. So this is handmade by a guy who used to have a shop in Anaganesh, but I don't think he's there anymore. So he went missing because he kept stealing weapons from the Ocarina of Time Zelda game and giving them to Ben. Sorry, video game junkie. Who's here, huh? Hi, Katie! Remember this? Yeah, don't you remember this trick from Podcamp? Jesus. Uh, oh, I, it is an exotic true. knife. Hello, D. Hello, Chris. Yes, it is an exotic knife, and I love it. That I do. Not very good. All right, well, you know. No, you did okay. Cool. You did all right. Uh, okay, so we'll put all the garlic in a pile. Okay. Right there. Now we need some ginger. I'll tell you one thing that Ben may not have noticed is every time you asked a question and I looked up, I stopped chopping in fear of slicing my fingers off. I noticed. I just didn't, okay. I just didn't want to call you out on it. No, it's okay. Okay. Happy we called out on it. And to keep my fingers. So I'm just going to peel this. Uh, I find the easiest way to do this is with a spoon, which I'm sure a lot of these people know. I didn't. Yeah, the people who watch the show. Oh, snap. So Dave, why did you pick cauliflower wings? Because that was your idea. Uh, I had it at a restaurant not that long ago, and uh, about last week sometime, and they were tasty. That's it. That's it. They were delicious. I like them crispy, and I didn't know I liked them crispy. Okay, so, full disclosure. We're not making them crispy? No, they might be. I, I've oh. never made them before. Oh, that's great. So, I don't know how they're going to turn. Well, it's I like it's a, whole, okay. it's a whole day of experiments. What you don't know is when I was at work, and you called, and you said, Hey, are you coming? And I was like, Oh, no. I lost track of time. It was because I was making a new tea. Oh, what are you making? Uh, it's... I got hired to make a tea, which, to be honest, I don't do very often. It's you got to be pretty special for to ask me to make an iced tea and for me to actually make it. Uh, but it's a ginger peach black tea. Ooh, that and sounds good. We're bouncing between two varieties of it right now. One that's like our other teas that are all unsweetened, and it's unsweetened, and one that's slightly sweetened with agave. And I'm just trying to convince someone that's asked us to make it if. Um, I'm trying to show them how sugar isn't necessary, and I'm hoping they taste it and go, you're right, it's not, let's ditch it. It tastes good, but it's still sweet. 
So that's that's one thing. None of the none of the teas that like none of these teas have sugar in them at no. all, right? No sugar, no sweeteners, no preservatives, no acids. So citric acid, that's out. Everything that you'd think to see in your average carbonated drink isn't in there. So what's in them? Tea. Tea, water, a bit of carbonation. That's it. There you go. And Dave, how did you get into making tea? Again? Kidding. Uh, I got into tea in 2010. I took over my grandfather's... Well, took over. I always start with took over, and I always correct myself. I reopened my grandfather's tea company. Uh, he imported two types of tea from Darjeeling, India. We did a few more. By the time we closed our loose tea company um, in 2017, I think was the official close date. Um, oh no, it was 2016. Um, we had uh, 480 types of tea. That's a lot of tea. That's from a lot two. of tea. From two. Yeah. So we had tea from all over the world, and we blended it all, we packaged it all, and we shipped it all over the world. And then one day somebody asked us, hey, could you make a pre-bottled beverage? And I said, sure. Why not? Let's give it a try. It worked out so well that I just decided, enough that's with all the hassle do. of loose tea, yep, we're just going to do iced tea and that's all we're going to do. Yep. And so we started with 12 flavors, and then we went down to 9, then we went down to 5, and then one day at the Jazz Fest two years ago, I uh, made Blueberry Rodeo for a Blue Rodeo concert. One afternoon, spur of the moment, and it sold out that night, and I was like, you know what, this is great, now we have 6. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, it was good. And we've just been making it bigger and better ever since. Uh, it is getting into Sobeys has been a big deal. Kind of unknown to everyone, but getting into America is a big deal. Coming soon. Are we talking about that? We're there. Oh! So we're just about there. So tell the, tell the people. I, well, actually, I, before you do that... I can't tell the people... Well, you just did. did. You literally just I did. I can't tell them where... This is know. live. I know. Um, in this pot, I just put a little bit of sesame oil. We're going to saute the ginger and the garlic in it uh, to make to start our barbecue sauce. So you're going to the states. It's coming soon to America. I'm not going to say where. I'm going to do this, and that's all you get right now. It's coming to America. I'm not going to say when, but soon. Cool. That's there big. Is. This is big news. That is big news. Yeah. Is this the exclusive? Is this the first time you said it publicly? No, it's the second. You son of a bitch. <laughs> yep. Where, did, where else did you say it publicly? I said it on Twerp the other day. On what? Twerp Communications. Did I a, don't know. Did what a blog is. with me. And I did a, did a podcast with me. I mentioned it there. I'm going to mention it here because it's becoming more real by the week. When? Can you say that? Uh, hopefully within the next month. Awesome. Yep. Within the next month, we plan to be in America, and by next summer, we really plan to be in America. That's very cool. And with going to America comes, hopefully, Cross Canada as well. And but then we'll Saskatchewan is included in that. If you include Saskatchewan in Canada. <laughs> which we do. Duh. <laughs> okay, so we have... Just smell that. Oh. I could before, but this, yeah. So we have our sesame oil, ginger, garlic. And we're just going to cook this on a medium heat. Not for too long. We don't want any, like, color on these. We just want the flavors to come out. And then to it, we're going to add uh, half a cup of soy sauce and half a cup of brown sugar. Uh, and a little bit of rice vinegar. And then we're going to add some sambal and some black pepper. What do you say? <laughs> it said Americans love iced tea. These... They love sweet tea. Oh, they love both. Depends on what end of the country you go to. So, Florida, uh, so okay. sweet tea. California, not so sweet tea. Yeah, that checks out. Are you going to do like a sweet one for... I've made a sweet one before. Uh, honestly, my opinion is that we have enough sweet tea in the world. I think that's true. We can probably do without more sweet true. tea. Yeah. With that said, this one that we're making for someone in the States... Oh, right, the custom one is for someone in the States, too, separate from us. That one, I can't say anything more other than what the flavor is. I can't say when it's coming out, because I don't know. can't say where it's going, because I don't know. 
This is great TV. Can't talk about it. Can't talk about it. I'm not going to say a thing. But it's coming. <laughs> Fantastic. Can I do it? Uh, right now, there's not really much to do. Cool. I'm happy to just talk and gab. So what else is new? That's it. We work really hard. But sometimes we're there until 3 in the morning these days. It's a lot of, a lot of time making tea. It's a lot of time making tea. In fact, even in our not tea time. So right now, we have a thing where we're mainly waiting for... Well, we've made tea. We have a lot of tea in stock. That's a big thing. Um, this is all, it's all canned? Yeah. Right. We have one more canning day on Wednesday for the rest of the white tea to get made. But then we're in stock for a little while, so we're happy for now. And then, pretty much I have labels sitting in a warehouse with our manufacturer waiting for me to ship them in, so I'm, I gotta take care of that. And then wait for them to get here before we can make more tea. Um, but in the interim time, we've actually been hired to can other beverages for other people. That's cool. So, we do that in the downtime. Uh, I, I've been able to go to the factory a couple of times where I brews the tea, and the last time I was there, I actually got to use the canning machine just on an empty can. So you put the lid. I mean, honest, it was it was really cool. I yeah, actually I really enjoyed that. Yeah. yeah, I broke it the other day. Did you really? Yeah, I did. During a canning, I uh, one of the the piece that holds the can in place and then pushes it up for the seamer to to uh, to crimp the lid on it. Uh, was sticky, and I kept trying to pull it up and pull it up, and I couldn't quite do it, and uh, and I just ended up snapping the bolt that holds it together, and unfortunately the manufacturer is in Michigan, so getting that thing replaced is is a big big deal. <laughs> well, Katie said, Dave, what do you know? And, ah! laughed. and then Steve Everything. said, Where is your facility? Uh, my facility is in. Uh, is near Hammond's Plains, off the Bedford Highway and Larry Utech Boulevard. Um, we're out on Blue Water Road. It is very much a manufacturing site, not a retail location. That's not really our thing. You know, we manufacture, we sell the stores, we encourage people to go to stores and have fun at those stores. You do a pretty sweet drum kit there. Though. I do. You walk in the front door and that's the very first thing you see is my, my personal drum kit. And to be honest, the one that you saw that's out there, I mean, I only have one, that's only a third of it. Jesus. You know, it, was, it was a pretty big kit. Do you like spice? Spice? Yeah. Do you like heat? No, but I can take it. Right. So I'm going to put a nice big teaspoon of sambal in here. With So what I have in here now is the, the garlic, the ginger, the sesame oil. Um, then I put in half a cup of soy sauce, half a cup of brown sugar, and now a heaping teaspoon of sambal, which I love. Cool. I don't yeah. know it. You don't know it smells. It's really nice. Yeah. It. So it's just like it's a fermented chili paste. So essentially, I know imagine it. imagine it's sriracha before sriracha gets pureed. Yep, I got that. Uh, and then I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of rice vinegar. Uh, Blue Water Park. It is on Blue Water Road, so I'm assuming that's the same. Thing. Yeah. yeah. I don't know actually. I don't know. I believe so. The Water Industrial Park, I think it's called. Probably. Yeah. Uh, the only thing I'm going to add in there is some pepper. Yep. Cool. Oh. Uh, but, you know, to finish my thing from before about the, the piece snapping. Yes, um, sorry. You know, praise be to Home Depot. They had what you needed? No, but we make something that worked. Nice. <laughs> uh, admittedly, we needed to bolt cut something. We don't have a pair of bolt cutters, and I don't really feel like buying a pair of bolt cutters, so I told the guys there, you know, can I just make sure that these things actually do what I think they'll do? And I just used the bolt cutters at the store <laughs> and didn't buy them. That was me. Ah. Ooh, look at that. So these actually look pretty good, guys. So let's flip them over. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, you can see these. So it's already starting to crisp up a little bit. I think in the next 20 minutes, these are going to get really nice and crispy. I gotta ask. Yeah. Is that live lag? Yeah. So live it is that. Yeah. And actually, okay. But it's like 30 seconds behind or something. It's but I think that's what you, I'm sorry, we're going to technical talk real quick. I think that's what they're seeing as well. It's not like everybody's getting the lag. Yeah, 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 sure. 
Which is, makes sense because when I came in and I put tea down, I was like, I'm not on your yeah, screen, yeah, yeah. and I swear I'm not a vampire. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> it it uh, takes a, a few minutes to get used to for sure. Cool. So if you guys don't know, um, this is a live broadcast, obviously, but there is a lag between you know what's going through the camera and what's going to the computer. So what you're seeing and what I'm seeing on my computer here is about 30 second 30 seconds delay. Um, so it's like, it's a little, it's a oh, little weird. Steve says only 10 second lag here. Yeah, but how would you know? How would you know, Steve? Steve? <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, so it's, it's kind of weird because I'm talking to you guys and I'll say stuff and then a couple seconds later I'll see reactions to what I'm saying. Like if I say something really funny, uh -huh. a couple seconds later I'll see like things pop uh -huh. up. Uh -huh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Sue said these would be really good with iced tea. Wait till we get the sauce on. Oh, so cool. these have to go back in for another 20 minutes. And then I think they're going to crisp up really nice. Okay, so timer. And then the sauce. Whoa. Oh. Oh, yeah. Sweet, salty, oh, so good. nice and dark. We're just gonna cook and it. And not, and not the kind of spicy that when you put your face in it, your eyes no. burn. No, it's not too bad. Um, oh, Steve said from the time that he finishes typing to the time I respond. But I actually think the chat's a little quicker than the video, but I might be wrong. Anyway, okay. So the is the sauce thick? No, it isn't yet, but it's gonna be. So that's what I was going to say. Thank you, Katie. Thank you for getting me back on track. <laughs> the sauce, we're just going to let it reduce on like a medium, like I have it on three right now. We're going to let it reduce until it thickens up, um, which with the amount of sugar in there, it's not going to take too long. And then we'll toss the wings in it, which is going to be really good. Okay, so now we're going to finish up our pickle. That's an interesting thing, though, reduction, where this seems like a simple thing, but this is just me, where people have been telling me to reduce things for a long time, and I've been like, cool, what does that mean? You know, yeah, the no, term no, reduce, it's... it's like, okay, but that's not super self-explanatory. Um, so, I'm going to get to yours in a second. Sure. So Kat says, what about oven rack placement? I have it in the middle of the oven, um, which for something like this, I think is probably the best. You don't want uh, too much heat in the bottom, and you don't want it too far away from heat, so I'll just go middle. So... Dave's talking about reducing things, and in cooking, reducing things is, is really important because it's concentrating flavor. Right. So when you're making a sauce, like let's say you're making a pan sauce, you sear a steak in a pan, you take the steak out, and then you have all this stuff on the bottom of the pan. That's called fond. Mm. So what you want to do is lift that up. So we would add like wine or brandy or whiskey or something to it to lift that up, or water or stock, and then we would reduce that liquid down to concentrate that flavor. Mm. Hi Donna. Um, and then you can put another liquid on top of that and reduce that down, and then you're like kind of stacking flavors. So in that way, if you have those flavors and they're reducing, they're just also concentrating and combining. Exactly. Oh, so you're you're getting, you're making new flavors out of things that you're adding, the ingredients you're adding, but you're also making flavors that weren't there before. Sure. Because you're concentrating these flavors and concentrating them together in a new way. Now, when say I did it with hypothetically, say I did it with brandy and wine. Yeah. Right. Uh, and I reduce the brandy, and then I add wine to it and reduce that. Is the brandy that's underneath getting, you know, so many more times concentrated because it's been in there longer, or does it just mix together and then reduce? No. So pretty much, once you add the wine, the brandy's going to stop concentrating. Really, because you're rehydrating it, right? Okay. And then you're, it gets going to intensify a little, uh -huh. but really it's going to be the wine flavor that's going to keep intensifying from there. Uh -huh. And then once you reduce the wine to a certain point, you add something on top of that. Interesting. Then you're, because you're diluting the flavor and then... Sure, right? sure. Now, can you, sorry to cut you off, no, can okay. you reduce at low temperatures? Yeah, of course. Okay. Well, I mean, this is at a low temperature here. This is well, on the only point. Medium. But I mean, without going to that high temperature in the first place. Yeah, okay. you can, but it takes a very, very long time. Sure. Because, I mean, reductions is really evaporation, right? Right. So, so the hotter it is, the quicker it will go. Yeah. But the lower it is, the longer it will take, but maybe it won't burn off things that you would at a higher temperature. Yeah, because at a higher temperature, I mean, all the flavors, the flavor compounds are all heat-soluble, right? right? So if you're boiling the shit out of something, right. 
you're gonna boil the flavor out of it. Right, right, right. Yeah. You know, it's a big thing where people have talked to me about making a concentrate for tea before, where we don't make a concentrate right now. We literally, like the white tea, when we make white tea, we steep 22 pounds of white tea at a time. And how much do you get out of that? Uh, 2,800 cans. That's a lot of cans. That's a lot of cans, but if we could make a concentrate, First, you're going to lose quality. We might. I mean, it would be a trial and error, trial yeah. and error. You know, it's going to take a long time to figure it out. But, you know, it's always been a worry because if you take white tea and heat it past 80 degrees, the oil in it burns out and you lose the yeah, tea. Yeah, you can do it below 80. Sure. Yeah. Okay, so we have these cucumbers here. You can see Yummy. How, there's a bunch of liquid here. And that came out because the salt pulled that out of the cucumber. So if you were to make tzatziki at home, which is you know yogurt mixed with cucumbers and flavorings, Delicious. do this to your cucumbers first, and you won't get a really wet tzatziki. It'll kind of be a nice dry thick. Just with sea salt. Just with salt, kosher salt, sea salt, salt, salt whatever you want. Yeah. So we're just gonna drain this into the sink onto my clean dishes. Okay. Just trying to get as much of the liquid out of there as you can, and we're not gonna bother rinsing this. We want that bit of salt that's in there. Hey Bob, nice to see you. Thanks for joining us. So I'm just gonna drain some more of this out of here. Okay, so now in here, all we have is that really thinly sliced cucumber. The texture is completely different than when it first went in there. So it's soft, but at the same time it has a bit more like bite to it. I love cucumber, it's my favorite vegetable, so you got me. So what we're gonna add in here, we're not gonna add any salt to it because we already have the salt in there. We are going to add some salt. Oh, yes. So, we're going to add about two teaspoons of salt ball. Okay. We are going to add, I have to read this, I'm sorry. <laughs> Rice vinegar. These, are, these aren't recipes I've made before. Leave it alone. Usually I have this stuff memorized. Hey, no judgment. Uh, we are going to add about a teaspoon of sesame oil. It has a little more than a teaspoon, but it doesn't matter. It, re it really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. No. Oh, interesting aftertaste. Oh, from the cucumber? Yeah, I can't pin it. It's not salt, it's something else. It's cucumber. No, I mean, it's obviously, the, It's yeah. the aftertaste of cucumber. It's just a flavor. Something about it is very almost creamy. Well, actually, you know, what we did by taking the liquid out with the salt is essentially reduce the flavor compounds in, or reduce the moisture content content in the cucumber uh -huh. to intensify the flavor. Well, it's definitely working. So it's what we just did in this bowl with the salt is the exact same thing we're doing here with heat. Cool. Yeah. So that is... And you can with, see how with, thick that is now. With a, a, a food that can mix well with salt, that can work. Well, I mean, that's what salt has been used for for thousands of years, right? But I mean, you know, some foods don't go well with salt. Like what? I know. I don't know. Tea. I couldn't mix salt in a bunch of tea and... Produce that if no, but there's no moisture in tea because it's already dry. Also true. Even wet tea, it'd be weird. Yeah, it would be weird. But you could also there's there's like ways that you could extract the tea. Uh, that's like the best question I think I've been asked in a month. What doesn't taste good with salt? I got nothing. Yeah, if anybody out there, here's the deal. If anybody out there can tell us one food, one real food item that doesn't taste good with salt. They will get themselves I was just thinking a six-pack of mixed T-North organic carbonated ice tea. But since that's probably not going to happen, we'll have to figure out another way to get it away. We will figure out another way if no one gets this. <laughs> Hello, Dave. Apples? Oh, no. Oh, no. no, not true. Sprinkle just a touch of salt on your apple. It'll brighten up that sweetness and blow you away. Okay, so in here we have everything except we need one teaspoon of garlic. No fruit, That's honestly, like works. you put a little salt on a watermelon or an orange. Uh, whipped cream. Ooh. Whipped cream, is whipped cream a food or is it milk? That's a good, guys. Yeah, Deanna's right. Guys, you guys gotta weigh in here. Is whipped cream a food? Because if it is, then Sue just won herself some tea, and if it's not, I'm sorry, Sue. So everybody, let's get a vote here. Is whipped cream a food? I mean, you do consume it. I'll give you that. But no, we got one no. Cat saying no. Dairy. Dairy. Oh, someone. Oh, Katie. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, Katie. That's true. 
Let's cheese a few. No, sorry, Sue. But you know what? Cheese and salt actually taste good. Well, you can't really have cheese without salt. Right. Yeah. So. Sorry, Sue. We got the votes back, and whipped cream is not a food, but that was a really good guess. Cheese is a food, Steve, but you cannot have cheese without salt. It's part of the way it's made. Composition. Uh, shellfish, it is already salty, but, you know, it's you got, a little you bit got of a, salt on there. You got a scallop? We'll just... I do, but they're all frozen. So. Chew. Oh, I see what he's saying. Cheese is made from cream. Gotcha. I understand, Steve. I'm sorry. Uh, salt would be yuck on salted. Yes, but salty it's cod already is already salted. salted. It's in the cheap. name, guys. Come on. <laughs> caviar, but it's salted as well. Sorry, Suze. Is it? Yeah. Really? No. Yeah, caviar is cured with salt. Okay, so we got our garlic in here. <laughs> if if something is, is packed or cured in salt, you've completely disqualified yourself in my book. Yeah, that, that's true. I gotta give it to him. Um, God, let's see. Cotton candy. Oh. Oh no. Sue, I, I, I don't know about that one, guys. Are we letting cotton candy go? You know what? I would almost venture in to take a teaspoon of sugar in it, pinch of salt, put it in my mouth, and see if it tastes. Well, salt good. and sugar go really. Well. Think of like uh, kettle corn. That's true. But it's different than all the carbs. But cotton candy specifically, Sue, that is a good one. I don't know if we can give it to you. Though. Does, we gotta, does cotton candy count as food? Or well, that's what like I'm saying. That's sugar. what I'm saying. Because it is just pure sugar. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, it's a valid question. Smell these guys. Smell that. Oh, okay. Guys, look at this. Look at this. This is beautiful. So in here we have those salted cucumbers that we drained off. Um, we have a little bit of sambal. We have some garlic. We have sesame oil. A little bit of vinegar. A little bit of sugar. It smells absolutely amazing. Oh my god. Eat one of those. Okay. Oh. Kat says salt is sick on Fruit Loops. I hope that means you don't get sick when eating salted Fruit I'm not sure if that's good or bad. I, don't, I honestly don't know if that's going to be bad. There's more to that though. Oh man, whole recipe. Well, there's dessert for us. And since you don't like making dessert. I think that's, uh. Steve, is that a cotton candy? Yeah, that's a cotton candy recipe. It has salt in it. Sorry, Sue! Yeah. Everything's salty, guys. That's what we're saying. Oh, it's oh, gross, it's gross on, on Fruit Loops. Yeah, see, uh, yeah, see skater lingo. I took that a different way. Yeah. You know what? I. Cat, do you live in Nova Scotia? <laughs> that doesn't sound like you do. Where are you? Is cat in Saskatchewan? Yeah. Get back to us. Okay, we gotta make some fried rice. We got our pickles done. Yeah. We have our sauce done for the wings. The wings are almost done. It's fried rice time. How long did you leave that reduction on before you took the off? So you can't really judge by time. It's more of a look. It has to be texture. So if you look at this, you can see that texture that there. That goopiness. Yeah. And what you want to do for most sauces, Towel, so I don't burn my beautiful board. It is beautiful. So, what you want to do is this is called a nappe, where you take the back of your spoon and you run your finger across it. And if that line stays, that means that your reduction is done. Okay, that's kind of the trick. So that's how we know that this is thick enough to coat our wings in, and it just it smells beautiful. Oh yes, it does. Okay, let's make some fried rice, guys. This is really exciting for me because fried rice is one of the things that I'm like a super big fan of. Didn't I make this for you? I thought I made fried rice one time when you were in before. It's possible, but I don't know. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. Steve's breaking out He's all the like, Right down there for it. Is there salt in there? Yep, yep salt. salt. Salt in Fruit Loops. Notice salt and red 40. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> Sorry, cat. You have been, your argument has been dismantled by Steve, coming in with the, the Fruit Loop ingredients. I love it. Okay. Fried rice. What I have here is a stainless steel wok. That stainless steel? Is this? Or, no, it's not. I was I'm like, wow, that's it is very cast black. iron. It is a cast iron wok. Okay. Um, so this thing holds heat very, very well, but it takes a while to heat up. But what we want is a very hot, 
hot pan. What's the oil? This is going to take about four or five minutes to heat up. Okay. So I have the burner on uh, seven. My smoking. burner is smoking. That's not actually coming from the wok. That's my burner. Um, now, what we're going to do here is we're going to make kimchi, kimchi, <laughs> kimchi fried rice. That's really hard to say. It's a new Korean thing, kimchi. Yeah. So, uh, my very first job ever was in a Chinese restaurant. And fried rice was like the first thing I learned. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to say it was kimchi. I was like, really? no, no, no. This, this, was, this was like mall Chinese food. This was not, not <laughs> good Chinese. Uh, actually, you know what? I was 15. I had all the Chinese food I could eat. I loved it. Cool. Yeah, it was incredible. I would not complain that day. Okay. My compost. Every, my compost is always there Do you want a bowl? during the day. But during the show, I'm over there because it looks absolutely disgusting. Do you want a bowl? No, it's all just... Okay. So, for this, uh, for a lot of Thai cuisine, a lot of Korean cuisine, uh, what we want to do, what do you want, Barb? Oh, you want to walk? Oh, yeah, she wants to cast our walk. She said that the other day. So, we're going to take those ends off, just the very, very ends, and then we're going to separate the white parts from the green parts, okay? And the white parts, we're just going to cut about the width of your thumb. It doesn't really matter that much. And the green parts we're going to cut a little finer. That's what I'm saying. There's nothing that can't go with salt. Hi, Kathy. This, okay. this is like getting to a point where I almost want to whip out my phone and be like, what doesn't work with salt? I don't think you're going to find it. I don't think I'm going to find anything either. Okay. So we have our white parts of our green onion, and then we have our green parts of our green onion. We're going to take one, two, let's go two cloves of garlic here, why not? I love garlic. Who doesn't love garlic? Cut the ends off. I'm sorry, I just kind of took over and booted you out of the kitchen. That's okay, I'm still here. He'll, so He'll cut it three times as fast as I will. That's true. And I'm, I'm getting hungry. That's okay. Know. Okay. I've been hungry since lunch. Well, there, you're not going to be hungry for long. Garlic. Yeah, you don't like salt. What? Thanks, Chrissy. She says we're doing great. That's very nice. Okay. So I'm just going to... I don't want this too fine because it's going to burn in the wok. So I just want even pieces. That's all I'm really looking for. But at the same time, you don't want to bite into a giant piece of garlic. So we want it small enough that... It's not going to hurt our faces, but big enough that it's not going to instantly burn. So about that. Okay. What we're going to do here is we're going to oil the pan. We're going to add our green onions and our garlic. And we're going to cook that with an onion that I forgot about. Oh. Oh. This is why we burn stuff down. So, hold on. Sorry, guys. We're going to do an onion first. So, we're going to do onion, then we're going to do the green onion whites and the garlic, and then we're going to add in our rice, get that nice and crispy a little bit, and then we're going to add in, no, salt on cherries is pretty good actually. Uh, then we're going to add in our kimchi and a little bit of soy sauce. And I think that's, oh, and the egg, and an egg. Oh, that's part. Yep. Yeah, that is definitely the best part. So I'm just gonna get. Now this. that's something that I definitely took from Pot Camp. <laughs> the, the knife thing. Yeah, the onion knife thing. I uh, I still stand in my kitchen and cut onions that way. It's it's so practical and it makes it so much quicker. So much quicker. It still has to be done with a pretty sharp knife. Yeah, your everything should be done with a sharp knife. Yeah. And I mean, if you're crying when you're cutting onions, chances are it's because your knife's dull. Yeah. KD. Sesame oil in the pan. Specifically sesame? Specifically for this. Okay. Is it a heating temperature thing? Flavor. Flavor. It's all flavor for this thing. So this is really hot. I'm gonna, I can't turn it on. You want me to? No, okay. Right. Okay. Sorry, go ahead, go ahead. Let's keep moving. It's a stir fry. Oh, Deanna, I'm really happy to hear that. Deanna said she won Thanksgiving with a cranberry sauce. That's cool. I 
don't know if Thanksgiving's a winning thing, but I'll take it. That sounds awesome. Okay, green onions, garlic in there. Now, for this, wok is really important, right? Like, yeah. you couldn't really do this in a pan in the same way. Uh, you could. I mean, you could do this. You could do this in a cast iron pan or like a frying pan, but it's not going to turn out the same. Cast right. okay. iron wok. That's the thing. <laughs> so, rice in. We're not cooking this stuff for long because everything's so hot, but the rice is going to drop the temperature of the, of the pan. So we want to just let that go for a minute, but you want to keep stirring it. Is the right start interrupt. Is the rice cold before I put it in? It is cold. So for this, it's best to use rice that is at least a day old. Um, two or three days is even better. The drier, the better. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Dry but not hard. No, you don't want like, like you don't want to take it out of a package and try to make fried rice with it. Package? Oh, oh, no, I mean, but like if you leave rice out for like an hour. Don't leave, don't leave it out. Keep it in the fridge though. Keep it moist. Keep it covered? Yep. Okay. Uh, Chrissy, you can get ice uh, the Tino North Key at Sobeys, um, at a lot of tea shops or coffee shops around town. Now I'm going to add. Uh, Is that your. Yeah. No. Never mind. I'm going to add a couple of big. Kimchi. Couple big chopstick fulls of homemade kimchi. That's your homemade? Yeah, but I kind of cheated a little because I forgot to make it. What? What do you mean, like you forgot to make it tonight? I forgot to make it last week, so it didn't ferment for us. I made it today. Oh. So I had to add some vinegar to it to ferment it. <laughs> Katie says cat should win for not giving up. I don't disagree. You know, persistence is good. Okay, we're gonna add a bit of soy sauce in here, just about two tablespoons or so. Love it. And this is gluten-free soy sauce, if anybody's wondering. Is that a thing? It's tomorrow, yeah. yeah. But I mean, it is gluten and soy sauce. Yeah, they use wheat to ferment the, the soybeans. Okay. Oh, man. It smells pretty good. You see this and you're like, why would I ever go out to Chinese ever again? Make sure you're scraping the bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you need to grab the handle, because they're not going to be hot. Oh, that's good enough. Thank you. I like having a helper. This is nice. As long as you can chop faster. Yeah, that's the, <laughs> that's the problem. All right, egg going in. Wait, how do you want that just mixed in? You mix it right in. Cool. So, you know, I'm such, I like eggs too much, maybe, that if I were to do this, mine would easily have five eggs. You don't want too much. You want it just enough to, like, kind of bring it together. Yeah, but it's like, just bringing it together and then there's more eggs. That's true. Okay. Let's clean this up a little bit. Okay, last thing, we're going to put these green onions in there, the green parts. Make sure you're scraping the bottom. I am. It's still sticking on the bottom, but I am. I'm going to move this board out of the way for a minute. I'm going to clean up this giant mess I made, and then we're going to plate some dinner. Cool. Okay. So let's give that a little taste. Yeah, just put a touch more soy. Morning. Same. Yeah. And then we're good. So we're gonna shut that off. You can take it off the heat. And we're gonna toss our wings. Wow, that gets hot. So sauce in here. And like you can see how nice and thick this sauce got. Almost like jello. Not quite. But getting there. That's it's not how I would describe it, but sure. Wing sauce pudding. Okay. <laughs> Whatever, man. But you can see how thick that is. And it tastes amazing. It does. When you, so cooks never use 
oven mitts because they're really annoying. We don't generally have time to throw them on and off. So we use towels, but when you do, make sure it's dry. Because if you have a wet towel, it's going to conduct the heat, it's going to steam, and it's going to burn you. So you grab something hot with a wet towel, it sucks. Let's use a dry towel. Oh, guys. Oh, guys. Oh, look at those things. Oh, guys. Browning. Beautiful. Oh, guys. It's I, all in. Look how nice that looks. I think these are going to be delicious. Everybody in the pool. Oh. So, we're just going to stir this up. Things just keep popping up on my screen. No, oh my God. Don't you know we're cooking here? Oh, that smells so good. Look how beautiful that looks. I don't know if anybody's noticed, but this is actually the second vegetarian week in a row. Same. Not even by design, it just happened that way. Oh, I see one place for the internet. My wife's here too. Ah, she's adding in the bedroom. Did not know that. She does not feel very well. Let's see. Yeah. Well, Katie, I have takeout containers. I can make Dave bring some home. Okay, we gotta figure do, out this giveaway. Do you want that? Because we're pretty much done. So what do you want to do here? Oh, right. Um, that's a great question. Usually on like Instagram, we just pull names out of a hat. We don't have any hats. Well, you might, but that's complicated. Okay, you know what? We named all the T's. Who can name three of the six T's? Is that fair? First person to name three of the six T's, unless you have won before, Patrick, because you drank all the T's. Or, Katie, you can't do this, I'm sorry. Yeah, Katie, you can't do this. Uh, um, if you can tell me what you think the flavors of Berry Bliss are, there are two types of fruit in it. Oh, so we're changing it now? I'm just saying. I'm changing the rules. That's an easy one. Well, it's not easy, but... Katie said, is this real life? Huh. So, okay, what, what, we, gotta, we have to give them an actual thing. So which is it? Could, are they name of Berry Bliss, or are they name... Well, we've already but you know what? Them. Name and tea flavors is easy. Guess in flavors that are in a can is hard. Okay, so you want them to guess tea flavors? Like, the three? What? Like, naming the teas, three of them, is easy. Figuring out what berries are in Berry Bliss might be very difficult. So you want them to guess? Yeah, do yours. Okay. Name three of the iced teas. One of them cannot be Berry Bliss. You cannot be dating Dave. And you cannot be Patrick Pillion. Pillion, sorry. Thanks, Suze. Just heard, just heard my wife yelling from the other room. Okay, final touch. A little bit of this cucumber. Blueberry and lemon. We can't have blueberry bliss because we've been saying it like six times. No, blueberry is different. Oh, blueberry is different. Yeah. Oh, is there a lot? Blueberry and lemon. Is that one? Yeah. Is that two or is that one? That's two. Bart, if you can name one more, the tea is yours. Blueberry, white tea, and black tea? Yeah, that's kind of close. Orange is one. White tea? I think white tea is one, right? Is it just white tea? Are we get into it? There's a coconut. So, coconut white tea. Yeah. I think I think it's going to Barb. I think I think Barb got it because ginger's not a thing yet. Barb, I think that you just won yourself some tea. <laughs> Congratulations, Barb. Guys, I have full disclosure here. Barb is my. Stepmother-in-law. Oh, but that's a, we did not cheat. I'm not. You, my phone's recording this. I wasn't texting her. I had no idea. You didn't know. 
We're okay. Okay, oh, uh, I'm really excited to eat this. Me too. Dave, thank you very much for coming this evening. Do you want chopsticks or a fork? Oh, chopsticks. Oh my god. Hey, I even get non-disposable. Wait. Those are disposable. Yeah. Huh. So, Barb, next time you're in town, or I think Susan might be going up there, Susan and I might be going up there in a few weeks, we'll bring it to you. Now, either way, you will get your tea. Cool. Dave, thank you very much for coming. Thanks for having me. Let's, let's try these. I'm going to just this. Yeah, yeah you know, whichever one. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, my God. That was really good. Nice. That was so good. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you to Dave for coming. Thank you everybody for playing along. Uh, next week we will be making gnocchi from scratch, which I'm excited about. If you don't know what gnocchi is or you've never had it, it is essentially like a potato pasta dumpling and it is to die for. So tune in next week. We'll be back. Same time, same place. Thanks everybody for watching. Thank you to my sponsors, T North Carbonated Iced Tea and Ashworks Cutting Boars. Have a great night, everybody.